Siphon Filter easily ranks as one of Sony's best games that desperately deserves to come back. With remakes slowly oversaturating the market, I know many would want Siphon Filter to be remade, but I would prefer that they go to the sequel route. The second PSP game ends on a cliffhanger, and having another entry start from here would be the perfect place to go. But who knows if this will ever happen, especially with Ben Studios losing some of its biggest talent after Days Gone. Another awesome game, and underrated one as well. But last year, rumors started going around related to retro Sony titles being re-released digitally. Conceptually, this sounded great, because now historical fans could play their old favorites on modern hardware, while also allowing for new players to explore these titles. This was all going to be part of Sony's revamped PS Plus program. Now, there would be tiers, and at the highest tier, you would have access to a growing set of retro titles. When this finally came out, the selection of retro titles was very small, and there were not as many heavy hitters as you would expect. To sort of have Sony presenting their best foot forward, the trade-off would with this was that Siphon Filter 1 was among the releases, and with not much competition, it greatly stood out as the must-try title for the retro selection. I didn't see the value in buying the premium tier yet, but I did like how Sony allowed you to purchase these games outright so you were not forced to join the highest tier. I was pleasantly surprised with how Siphon was on the PS5. There are other means to play this excellent title, but for many this is a great way to experience it. Two of my favorite features is the ability to save anywhere, along with being able to rewind. This means that you can opt to play this game as it was intended, or use these new features to make it more accessible. Siphon Filter is a tough game, so to add these features allows the game to remain intact, while also being more approachable for newcomers. Later that year, Siphon Filter 2 was released, and it's often considered the best. But the odd thing was that when the Siphon Filter games were being leaked that they were coming back through a ratings board, Siphon 3 was sadly not among the ones listed. At the time, I thought this was a shame considering that 3, while it has a fair share of issues, it's still a great game, and honestly one that I find myself liking even more over time. Thankfully, additional information was released later on to indicate that 3 was actually coming back, just like 1 and 2, and now you can find 3 on the PSN store. So I thought this was a good excuse to discuss some more Siphon Filter. For some background, Siphon Filter 3 had an interesting development. After the success of Siphon 1, the team was able to release a sequel within one year. Siphon 1 was and is a great game, but 2 is one of those rare sequels that improves and refines on it in many ways. Problem solving was very much a rewarding element that was seen throughout the first game. Many of these moments were set up in a smart way to present a problem and then provide room for the player to figure it out. There were clues dropped that they could piece together. The lack of guidance meant that it was even more rewarding to figure out. This is something that is not often seen in many modern games, so when you go back and play these titles, from their design standpoint, they can feel like a breath of fresh air. Two then took this and amplified it with so many memorable situations that each level would be full of them. Whether it was trying to take out two guards while trying to save some fellow soldiers, or figuring out how to get past a narrow space full of enemies without being detected. So Siphon 3 had some big shoes to fill and the original design for the third game was going to be very ambitious. One of the original developers of the first two games wanted to take Siphon into being an online experience. Online play is in almost everything nowadays, but back on the PS1, online wasn't even a thing, and started to have a rise with the PS2 era. So Siphon 3 originally was going to be a PS2 game, but at the time, the PS1 was still selling a lot of games. This meant that Sony was going to make a decision that would change the direction of Siphon Filter 3. It was at this time that Eidetic, and now known as Ben Studios was owned by Sony. Sony wanted Ben to stop working on this ambitious online-focused title and make one final PS1 game. The developers would need to then pivot and deliver a sequel in a shorter period of time. This was even seen with the storytelling. 3 would feature a lot of flashbacks, and this was a result of the Sony mandate for another PS1 game. The online siphon filter did eventually see a release as the Omega Strain on the PS2. My point with all of this is that Siphon was not made under an ideal situation, and the developers still managed to create a very fun title. Siphon Filter 3 is a much more straightforward experience compared to the prior two entries, but at the same time, I think it very much shows how the core action of this trilogy is very compelling. For those new to Siphon Filter, it's a third-person shooter with a nice mix of action and stealth. Many levels will allow you to use a mix of both, whereas others lean heavily into one. For aiming, you have two different options. You can hold down the target lock button, and the game will indicate which enemy you have in your sights, and all of this is done through a cinematic sweeping camera motion. I never got tired of this, and it adds a movie 
movie-like visual style to the action when you use this, especially when you pull off a 180 swing of the camera. But enemies will come equipped with body armor, so you can either pump them full of bullets into their armor to break it, but it might be a better option to use your manual aim. Siphon does feature a first-person aiming option, and this allows for more tactical options as well, and it's great to use for the stealthy areas. While in first-person, you can choose to lean left and right. The shooting action is satisfying in these games, especially with 3 as there's plenty of guns and weapons to use along with the detail presented. Enemies will spray blood and blood will stay on their clothes when hit. The wide array of tools means that you're well equipped for short and long range combat, stealth, or just running around with a fun shotgun or using the iconic taser. Now like I said, 3 is more straightforward, and I think this is where it gets most of its attention for its flaws. Where the prior two games had a healthy amount of problem solving moments, 3 really doesn't feature them. This is why I brought up the developmental shift with the game. I think it simply came down to time, and how this game turned out was not how it was originally envisioned. For 2, they spent a while brainstorming interesting fun situations to put the player in. They would be in movie-like moments, but all of it would be playable. They were really well thought out and very memorable, but when you don't have the proper amount of developmental time, and this project is mandated rather than a passion project, I think that can affect the final product. Now even with that being said, I do think the developers could have tried to include more problem solving moments in 3, because it feels like a part of the siphon identity was dropped in the third entry. Thankfully the improved checkpoints from 2 are featured here, and are more forgiving than 1. Now there are still memorable levels and situations here, especially with the first mission. I love how these games do a good job of throwing you into one level, and then adding on additional objectives that pop up throughout. For first timers, you never really know what you're going to face when in a level, and it keeps you on your toes. For example, the first level has you in a sniper battle, fighting through a hotel, and then contending with a hostage situation. Another thing I like is how you get to play as different members of the crew, as many of the missions will feature characters outside of Gabe. Easily the best area of the game is the addition of the minigame mode. Essentially, you get to set up these short instances separate from the campaign, and there's a lot of replay value here. It is perfect for a few minutes or a few hours. You can choose to play as your preferred character along with different mission types, where it's either more focused on stealth or open combat. The provided maps have some randomization, which means there's a good amount of variability. Now, Siphon 2 had offline multiplayer, but I think this mode would have been perfect for split-screen co-op, where it was disappointed that the problem-solving area of Siphon Filter took a hit in 3. The minigames are a pleasant surprise, and it's something that I wish that was seen in future releases. This challenge mode is the perfect thing to add to any single player campaign, and gives the player more excuses to jump back in, and enjoy the action outside of the campaign again. Most tend to focus on the negative when it comes to 3, and forget to mention this delightful mode. Siphon Filter 3 is both the worst out of the original trilogy while also being a very good action game. While I do find this entire series to be underrated, 3 is one that is often forgotten about, with it being right at the tail end of the PS1 era, and the PS2 already being out and drawing in much of that attention. And when I say worst, I only mean when compared to 1 and 2. I don't think this game is bad by any means. Like I said, I find myself finding new things to like about it as the years go on. The regression when it comes to the problem solving does suck. There's no way around it. It is an element about the prior two games that contributes to making Siphon special. At the same time, I understand that the less than ideal development is probably the reason for the lack of it here. At the same time, the inclusion of the minigame mode is an excellent surprise, and it makes 3 a bit extra special since it's the only game with it. Considering now that you can find the third entry on PSN, I honestly would say that you should play all three. Each one has something very unique to offer. What are your thoughts on Siphon Filter 3, and where does it rank for you? Let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you'd like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.